ดีค่ะ Welcome to be my guest and you're with me สดชื่นลิมเกียงไก่ In today's episode we are at the Mae Fa Luang Foundation under the royal patronage Today we will be looking at the roles and the projects that our special guest will tell us today So let's not waste any more time and hear more about it In today's episode, we are joined by Mom Luong Dit Panatta, the Sakun Deputy CEO of the Mae Fa Luong Foundation under the Royal Patronage. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ Thank you for joining us today. First of all, can you tell us a little bit more about the role of the foundation? Well, we are a foundation established by Her Royal Highness the Princess Mother. Mm-hmm. Um, we have been uh, in operation now for about 42 years. Um, the mission of the foundation is to bridge uh, the gap between the rich and the poor um, through providing people with better livelihood opportunities. Um, we do a lot of um, sustainable development work um, inside and outside of Thailand. Okay. I think one of the more uh, well-known projects of the foundation would be the Doi Tung Development Project, yes. which is in Chiang Rai Province. Um, There, d o i t u n g was established in 1988. Um, its goal and mission w- is to uh, improve the quality of life of okay. um, the Hill Tribe villages living in the area. There are about, um, back then, was 15,000 um, people mm-hmm. from 29 villages of six different ethnic minority groups. I see. And well, basically, when we started the d o i t u n g Development Project. Uh, Doi Tung was a barren land. There was a lot of opium cultivation in the area. People were living in poverty um, and without a lot of opportunity. Uh, our first was to um, first initiative was to uh, turn them from opium farmer um, shifting agriculture into wage earner. So we pay, we paid them we paid them to uh, reforest the area. I see. Um, While they were reforesting the area, uh, we we realized that um, you know without sustainable and meaningful jobs, um, yes. people won't protect the forest. Mm. So we started a lot of the income generating activities w- that see. are suitable to the life skill of the people in the area. Mm. For example, the Akha and La who are good with um, embroidery, with weaving. Mm. So we started our cottage factory, which is now. Um, turn and became uh, the Doi Tung Handicraft Factory. I see. Um, we also started um, medium-term and long-term cash crops. We have coffee. We have mm-hmm. macadamia, which is again now uh, sold in our stores and in different um, outlets throughout uh, Thailand. I see. Um, now I think um, Doi Tung is at the stage where we have uh, become more mature. We have more. Uh, Knowledge mm. that we think are applicable in other areas. Um, so since 2002 onward, we have been sharing these mm. knowledges with um, people in different parts of Thailand, in mm. different countries, um, a- inside Asia and in Central Asia. I see. So you started out. The foundation started out on the in the upper part of the country, and then spread out. To the other parts of the country. So, what is the role of the foundation in other parts of the country? What type of projects have you implemented? Well, um, the programs that we run in other part of Thailand are mostly um, rural development programs. I see. Um, we have been asked to go into uh, difficult areas mm-hmm. where um, primarily people are left without livelihood options um, okay. or opportunity. Um, there are a lot of um, issue of. Poverty, indebtedness, and we started the program to um, to help improve the quality of life of the people. Our yes. programs are very much um, area-based, and uh, it depends on the local people really to to change and transform their lives. Um, nice. Our role are more or less like a um, facilitator of change. Uh, we provide startup capital. We bring mm-hmm. in. Uh, knowledge and know-how, mm-hmm. uh, equipment, s along with um, market analysis, um, mm-hmm. product development, and we help link them to to the marketplace. And the whole um, 
the whole process of creating opportunity and improving the livelihoods. We also tie in factor of um, empowering the communities, um, training the trainers, and, okay. and get people to work together in group and, and structure uh, local businesses. I see. So as we know that up north, especially the Doi Tung project, is very successful and well known. Do you think other parts of the country with the projects you implemented are considered as successful as the Doi Tung project? Well, um, in our work, we, we segmented our progress of development into three different parts. Okay. Um, first is ad addressing the issue of survive, survival. Mm. The second one is a sufficient and the third one is sustainability. Okay. Um, I would say that our program are very successful at addressing the, the earlier stage. However, we are not at the sustainability stage uh, for the most part yet because um, it takes a longer time to, to, to mature. And our programs in other parts of Thailand have not been in operation for that long. But okay. if you look at um, all the different details, um, mm -hmm. all the different um, ratios that we've collected, the level of indebtedness has gone down, level of income has grown, mm -hmm. um, asset has grown, mm -hmm. ability for people to work together have been uh, more, there are more groups of people working together. So in that, in, in, in that aspect, if you look at that, I think we are, we are, we are quite successful at, at addressing the issue. I see. So what about other projects that you're currently working on at the moment? Is there anything new or something you're looking forward to tell us about? I think the one that, um, well, uh, well, let's talk about the most recent one. Um, okay. uh, in, in Thailand, we, we ran uh, a reforestation program mm -hmm. covering the area of um, 250,000 rai okay. in Nan province, upper north of, 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 of Nan province. And that program, I think, is one of the most successful programs that we have implemented in, mm -hmm. in, in that scale. Uh, it's simply because we are able to not only stop um, shifting cultivation and, and burning of forest land, mm -hmm. but we're also able to revive the forest along with um, improved quality of life to people and you know, based on our uh, figures that we have collected over the past six years, yes. it really shows that um, the communities are, uh, are better off, are much better off. So oh, this, these are, this, this is the program that we are quite uh, proud of and we're now considering uh, doing phase two of the reforestation program also in Nan province, but I in different see. areas. I see. So can you tell us a little bit more what, what actually happened there at that, at that project? Well, when you look at Nan, um, I think it is one of the areas where there are more forest land than, than they do farmland. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of people um, who have migrated and been living in the mountainous area for a very, very long period of time, yes. some even before the, the, the law and, and, and the regulation. And these people, you know, a lot of, uh, um, they're not, they don't have a whole lot of um, option mm -hmm. in terms of income so they either farm or they have to move away into the in, into cities and become uh, laborer yes. and for those who decided to farm because it is not legitimate mm -hmm. um, I think they have to live uh, most mostly like an outlaw mm -hmm. uh, doing short-term only cash uh, short-term cash crop because um, it, it has no, less risk yeah. and not a whole lot of investment yes. and you know because of this and also uh, I, I, I would say uh, exploitation of the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, these people are uh, a lot of time at the receiving end of our accusations. Mm -hmm. um, when we started working there, we, we realized that um, you know, if unless we address the issue of their quality of life, of yes. their income, uh, they will not be able to sustain or they will not be able to reforest the land. Mm -hmm. We have taken the knowledge that we have done in Doi Tung and, in, and other areas okay and planned in a, a very large scale okay. on how to, to work with the communities. It's been quite a bit of a challenge because mm -hmm. there have been so many initiatives trying to, to change the condition in Nan. Yes. And when we came, we came in uh, as the later, organiz later organization, um, I think there's a lot of mistrust. Um, so we have to overcome that issue. But, um, one thing that we are happy with is, is the readiness of the community. Mm. When, when, they, when, when, when trust has been established, yes. um, communities are, are willing mm. 
to transform their lives. And, and we, have, we have seen so. We have seen so many people uh, now become uh, leaders of their communities. Mm -hmm. We have seen husband and wives uh, reunited because there are work opportunities in, in near their homes. Okay. Um, family are now together. You know, so oh, the overall picture have been, have been better. Okay. So now let's just take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk more about it. Welcome back to the program. We are still here with Mom Luong Dit Panatta, the Sakun Deputy CEO of the Ma Fa Luong Foundation under the Royal Patronage. So welcome back to our second break. So earlier you mentioned that you also had projects abroad as well. So can you tell us in which countries that you implemented you know, some of your projects there? We've implemented projects in three countries. Okay. Um, started off in 2002 in Myanmar when we've been asked by uh, ONCB Office of Narcotic Control Board of Thailand mm -hmm. to help provide development assistance to uh, an ethnic minority group um, in Myanmar side along the Thai-Myanmar border mm -hmm. uh, because um, back then uh, the policy of the Burmese government was to move some of the people from the highland to a lower land area in mm -hmm. order to dissuade them from growing opium. I see. But we were afraid that, uh, the Thai government were afraid that if, if they came down here uh, to the bo to near the border area in the lower land without any kind of livelihood options, um, they will pick up uh, opium cultivation mm. and it would be closer to the Thai border and it would bring problems to, to, to our country. Um, so we started um, livelihood rural development programs in, okay. in, in Myanmar. And I think that was around the time when I started working with the foundation. And I, I remember that um, the condition was very, very similar to Doi Tung when, when, when we started off. Mm. Uh, back then must have been like 20 years uh, prior. So they're just, you know, 20 years after, they're still yeah. living in the same condition. And there was a lot of issue of um, sicknesses, you mm. know, uh, very limited access to simple medication. Mm. Um, if you have malaria, then you uh, you will die if you don't have the cure. Okay. So that it was it was that bad, and the price between living and, and dying was like 130 baht. Which yeah. you know, when we started off, we we, we started off with our um, malaria uh, program I to see. train local people to cure their own people of of, of malaria. Uh, we also provide a lot of the um, uh, camp doctor visits um, okay. from from the Thai border to again address the issue of health. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, you know, we have established a certain level of trust and that's when we started working with uh, irrigation systems. We also tried some basic um, agriculture. Uh, we provide them with livestock. The goal was to make sure that they have enough um, food security. Mm. And um, it was a six year program when, when the program ended, we were able to address the issue of um, food security. Mm -hmm. We have also established schools, um, health care, okay. uh, small hospital, um, and uh, the produce that the local people uh, produced in the area was sent outside, so there's actually more income mm. um, in the area. After that, um, I think based on the success of Doi Tung and our um, extended program in Myanmar, we've mm -hmm. been asked by the Belgium government to start working in Afghanistan, okay. where um, back then, it was, I think it was in 2007, to, no, 2007, 2008, um, and Afga Afghanistan back then was the number one opium producer mm -hmm. uh, in the world. I see. So we, we started working with some of the uh, opium farmers, mm and also some of the people in the communities. We, we do not target specifically at those people who are uh, doing illicit uh, crops because we believe that it should be area-based and opportunity should be for everyone in the community in, 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 in those areas. And the program was quite fascinating because we have to work with livestock, um, mm. sheep mainly, and we have not have any experience of raising sheep in the desert area before yeah. so it's all about understanding their way of life and bring over the better management system and we realized that in the area you know um, sheep mortality rate were very very high um, there were about 30 percent so uh, that I guess uh, 
impacted a lot on, on their livelihood. So we, we bring in a better management system on how to cure uh, sheep from illnesses. I see. And we were able to drop uh, the mortality rate down from 30% down to three. Um, okay, people have more assets yeah. and they're able to uh, make a better living. Mm -hmm. I remember you know, going there um, back then, um, they, they, they took us into their homes and, yeah. and, um, and um, we were very, very happy because it was, I, I think for, for, for us, it was the mm. first time working outside of the country and also cross-culture. And was there any challenges though? Because the culture would be so different. It's not like in Myanmar where the culture is very similar to the Thai people. So it's quite easy to understand what they're thinking, their lifestyle. But in the Middle East, it's something very different, especially in a war-torn country. So did you find any challenges there that you... Yeah. Um, at, at first, I think understanding their culture was, was one of the things that we have to, 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 to grasp mm. um, quickly. and. Um, there are a certain degree of respect that we have to, to, to give to one another, but it's not so difficult mm. in, in working besides the language and the culture. Love the food, by the way. Yeah. The food there is great. I got probably one of the best uh, rack of lamb in my entire life, <laughs> served at one of the home of a, of a warlord. Oh, I see. Um, that sounds with, interesting. <laughs> with, 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 a, with, a, with a server carrying an AK-47. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. Um, it was, I think, in, in, in those countries, words are law. Yeah. And when someone has given someone their word, mm. they, they hold on to it. Mm. And it's the same with us. So when we, made, when we made a promise, we have to live up to our promise. Nice. Same with them. But the negotiations are very tough. Um, you know, I remember that um, on the very last day of, of, uh, of, of concluding the conditions in our program, yeah. You know, in the morning they still negotiated with us <laughs> and they said that, you know, we have to negotiate and afterwards, you know, whatever, after the negotiation process is over, you know, whatever the conditions, we will, we will honor it. And mm -hmm. they have honored it for the, for the remaining six years of our program. And I think that's mm -hmm. one of the areas where uh, I learn a lot and I appreciate a lot about um, their tradition, culture and more so they're people, the people. I, I really respect that. And I think in that country, I, I, I realize um, the meaning of uh, happiness or mm. the meaning of appreciation, you know, with uh, uh, interacting with a uh, uh, shepherd and, and, and the local, local people. Right. Was, was that you, you enjoyed that? Did you, can I say that, that you enjoyed the simplicity of the people? It was just words and trust. It's nothing more complicated yeah. than that. Well, I think appreciation is something that, that is given and it's in the eyes mm. and it's in the handshake and it's in the, the, the body motions. Yes. And these are things that I think, you know, money cannot buy mm. and it's, it's very, very sincere. Yes. So those moments I, I, I realize, you know, things that are, uh, the, the, the effect and the impact that we have created for, for, for the people. Well, I have to stop quickly here, but in our next break, you can tell me more about the third country. Okay. Welcome back to the program. So in our third break, I will ask you to tell us a little bit more about the third country that you implemented your project on. Can you tell us a little bit more? Well, the third country mm. is in Indonesia. Okay. Um, we've been asked by um, the Drug Enforcement Agency of Indonesia to help uh, in, in Aceh province, um, mm -hmm. just after the tsunami. And um, there was a lot of issue with um, cannabis cultivation. We've okay. been asked to, 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 to take the knowledge from Doi Tung and help the local people there. Um, we've been in there for about, we went there for about six years as well. Mm -hmm. um, implemented integrated uh, development that include um, not only uh, the livestock element, but we did take a lot of the livestock element that we learned from uh, work in Afghanistan and, and, and improve them in mm. Indonesia. We do not have to work with sheep but with goat this time. Mm -hmm. And we also do a lot of uh, irrigation, oh, um, providing more water to the farmlands. We mm. have short-term cash crop, long-term cash crops, and we work with the people in the community. Mm -hmm. And again, it was completely different um, in terms of uh, 
experiences. Yes. Uh, in Afghanistan, there's, it's dry. So people are not without a whole lot of opportunity. So when provided with opportunity, they work very hard to, to improve their quality of life. Mm -hmm. Indonesia, where you can pick fruits from the tree, um, it's more challenging. And we have to identify uh, motives of the, of the people in the community. And, and we have to go through the different, uh, completely different uh, approach in terms of trying to, to talk to the communities because there are um, different key players uh, in, in the area. So not only that we have to talk to the village uh, leader, we have also have to talk to informal, informal leader, spiritual, and um, mm. I would say the, the, the local, uh, uh, local warlords in the area because, um, again, we are working with uh, the freedom fighters. Mm. And do you say that, would you say that it was a successful, you know, approach, program? Well, it took us a while to really um, find our feet. Mm. Um, I think the program are again quite successful. Um, I would say that it would not it, wa it wasn't as successful as the program in Afghanistan mm -hmm. because of the different um, factors as I've mentioned before. Yes. But um, when we did a post project evaluation a year after, you know, things are still running. Mm -hmm. um, our malaria program that mm -hmm. we have learned or we have implemented in Myanmar has become a provincial mm -hmm. uh, program and later on become part of the national programs in terms of training uh, midwives uh, in addressing, uh, detecting different strands of malaria and providing medicine to the people. Um, our doctor that we have trained has become uh, quite a key figure in trying to make the movement within, within the province and has, been, has, has taken several trips to, to the capital to, to give talk to uh, um, senior, uh, senior uh, government officials. I see. So each, in each country, the time span was around six years, you've mentioned earlier. So who takes care of these projects after, you know, times is already like six years? So what happens next? Who follows up this, you know, these projects? Well, um, the reason why our programs are six year spans because um, it takes about approximately about six years to build capacity of the local people. Mm. Uh, from day one, we made it very, very clear that we're not here forever. Mm -hmm. From day one, we told the people that um, you will be the ones who have to transform your condition, your, mm -hmm. your living condition. And we asked them to identify uh, key people, um, people who are willing to work hard, uh, people with leadership qualities, mm -hmm. and then we trained them over the years. They became our staff, mm -hmm. they became our workers, and because we work a lot with the communities, all the knowledge that we have, cr we have passed on to them on how to manage the water resources, how to make different types of weirs, how to run different types of agricultural programs. We also set up different types of uh, uh, revolving funds, um, seed funds, um, livestock funds, medicine funds that uh, after two or three years being operated by the local communities. Mm. So when we starting to pull out in year five and eventually in year six, the local communities are equipped with um, capabilities mm. to, uh, to carry on, in fact. Mm. So that's the reason why we're able to, to pull out in six years. Oh, I see. And do you follow up? on the results yes. like after you pull, pull out? Yes, we, all, we always have to have a post-project evaluation mm -hmm. which can take, uh, you know, usually takes one year after. Mm -hmm. We would go in again to assess and some projects we do two years in a row of post-project evaluation just to make sure that the livelihood of people is, uh, that they are able to, uh, the community are able to sustain mm. the programs that we have created because after all, the reason why we are implementing the programs is because we want to help the quality, improve the quality of lives of the people. If they can't sustain it, then we need to continue of to course. go back and, and support. Right? Okay. so. When you went back, was everything still up and running? Of course, everything's still up and running. Mm. You know, there, there may be a drop uh, mm. in the efforts here and there, yeah. or uh, we may need to go in and, and, and do a further training mm. or provide a little bit of a financial, financial support. But um, the overall picture in, in all programs that we have implemented, you know, I, I will, there has not been a program where uh, the condition were worse off than when we started. I see.
see. So currently, is there any project you're working with any other country at, at present? Um, well, I think there are, there are two things that we are, we are working. Um, every year, we traveled with Thai, Thai government to United Nations mm -hmm. in Vienna, and uh, we try to promote um, sustainable development agenda uh, at the United Nations level. Mm. Um, in 2013, I believe, uh, you know, the Thai approach has been endorsed and been recognized as mm. part of the United Nations guiding principles to address the issue of um, illicit crop cultivation. Mm -hmm. uh, since, I think, last year, we have been working with the German government on okay. their global program mm -hmm. where, again, we will, we, we will host and train um, government officials, um, civil servants from different countries on how to do sustainable development work. Okay. Uh, so far, we have trained the people in Colombia mm. uh, on how to start the programs in okay. reforestation, um, also in livelihood development. And I think in two months' time, we will we will have a trip to to Colombia with together with the German government to follow up on what uh, they have been doing since since the training. So is it the same as what you have implemented in the other three countries you mentioned earlier, like going in and then spending time teaching the locals? Is it the same thing that you're planning to do in Colombia? Um, we plan for them to do the same thing. Mm. But we, one thing is it's scalability. Mm. If you want to rapidly increase the condition of the people in different parts of the world, then you need to be able to train others to do the work. Mm. And in the last three years, the foundation has been spending a lot of time on extracting our knowledge, um, analyze them and archive them in, in a way that can be simply um, transferred to, to selected groups of people. Mm. Um, and we have been hosting different uh, government agencies, um, private sectors uh, in, inside Thailand, outside Thailand, and train them on how to do simple development programs or rural development programs mm -hmm. um, in order for them to, to go back and, and, and change the condition. So I think you know, we have a little bit of both. Um, in, in, in programs where we want to uh, implement, we will have the element to, to do so. And, and for broader uh, groups of people, mm -hmm. we, can, we can start off with, with training. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for sharing the information with us today. Thank My you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. With the foundation playing a big role in supporting the society, especially in the northern region of the country, where many people are still living in poverty. The foundation provides the people in the project area with education, proper infrastructure and legitimate ways to earn their living, while fostering coexistence between man and nature. And that's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. See you again next time. สวัสดีค่ะ